first thing first, uh, as uh, and I said, this lecture is going to be in English. I was not prepared for that, so I will we just hope for the best. Uh, today we're going to build uh, this. Uh, the, is any one of the English speakers know what it is? Uh, it's it uh, yeah well we're actually going to talk about what's beneath the chessboard. Uh, this is the chessboard, but what's the, the game underneath is uh, backgammon in English. In Hebrew, it's sheshbesh, and this is what we're going to build today um, in CSS. Obviously, I'll give you one chance. We can back off now, not do any CSS, and just play sheshbesh today. Do you want to? <laughs> uh, we're going to try it out later. Okay. So I, I brought this as a visual aid, and we're going to get back to it. Uh, but before we're going to get back to it, uh, I first, I want to just bring you just uh, everybody to what we're going to do today. So uh, can we see my screen? Yes. No, you can. No. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> um, wait, I don't want to. Uh, אני לא ידעתי את זה. אתה בלבלת אותי. דופליקייט. כן, 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 לא, אבל אני צריך להוריד את הדופליקייט. איפה זה? Okay, so uh, just I'm sorry for this delay. Uh, so just to bring everybody uh, up into uh, hi uh, to the to the, the same page, uh, we're going to talk about today in, to, in, to about CSS. We're going to talk about working in 3D in CSS. What you see here is pure CSS. Uh, things like this and things like this is uh, the the last one I did last week. Uh, things like this table tennis. יש אפשרות להעביר את המקרן? אתם מכירים? לא רואים כלום. No. Um, okay, but what, what, you, what you, uh, we do see here, uh, you don't see everything. There is a lot of things in the background on the floor. Uh, but again, everything is in a pure CSS. Even, for example, this uh, house of cards, pure CSS. And also, uh, by the way, you can see that there's mouse interaction. When I move the, the mouse, uh, I also have mouse interaction. And I have like a button here that transfer uh, it into wire uh, frame. Again, everything uh, you've seen is obviously with uh, pure CSS. There's no JavaScript. Um, and this is the kind of things that we're going to talk about today. So just to, uh, to, to understand where you're coming from, if I'm going to ask each of you to build me this simple cube in pure CSS, obviously, uh, anyone here can do it? <laughs> OK, what? Using chat GPT. Using chat GPT, OK, without using chat GPT? OK, so this is uh, what we're going to start today. Um, let's, let's just close a bit of uh, unnecessary windows. And this is the, the first boilerplate, uh, let's call it, that we're going to start on today. All I have here in the HTML, let's make the HTML a bit bigger. Do you see the code okay? OK. Uh, so all I have here in the HTML is just a div of scene. Uh, the reason I wrap everything I do in scene, I'm not going to get too much into it, but the scene is like, actually it's like a camera. Because when I want to move the camera around, I can't actually do it because it's not actually a camera, it's just perspective. So what I am doing is just moving the scene on the counter di direction. Uh, so this is the reason I wrap everything in scene, but today we're not going to get too much into that. And here in the CSS, uh, all I have here is just uh, a very simple reset. Uh, of padding margin zero. I'm using box sizing, obviously, of border box. And to the body, I'm just, I don't have a lot of things on the body. I do have a display grid and, and place item center. So the scene is in the center of the body. And I have something here, those three lines. We are going to get to these three lines a bit ahead, OK? But they are very, very important. So let's, let's close it for now. So I have the scene. The scene is obviously position relative, and everything will be position absolute relative to this scene. So let's start and build a cube. 
And when we're building things in uh, CSS in 3D, there's actually two methods to, to build things in CSS. There's constructive and additive. Constructive, okay. Constructive means actually adding things, okay? Like, for example, if I want a cube, I need to actually build six sides of the cube and then look, uh, position each one of those sides relative to the cube, and then I can rotate the cube like we're going to see now. The other method is using layered. Uh, so, for example, what you see here, yeah, uh, this animation, uh, this text is actually layers and layers and layers and layers of text. They're, they're separating just one pixel apart. And of course, each one of those layers has, has a different color, so you can have a nice little shading effect. And this is the second method we're going to work about uh, with the layer method uh, uh, when we create the pieces. Uh, but obviously, if you want to create something like this, uh, if you want to do it with layer, it's, it won't be uh, very physical, but uh, just doing with uh, constructive, so it's just uh, uh, 20 triangles just building each one of these shapes. So obviously, each one of those uh, methods is for whatever you want to build. You need to uh, fit the method to, the, to what you want to build. Um, let's close it, and let's close it. So as I said, the cube uh, is obviously additive, uh, excuse me, it's constructive, so I'm going to do a simple cube. And inside of this cube, I'm just going to put six sides. I'm just going to use divs, OK? Uh, by the way, I am using Emmet. I'm not using uh, Pug. If you are comfortable with using Pug or whatever uh, HTML post uh, rendering, uh, you can do it. You can actually uh, render the, the HTML with React. Whatever you want, the CSS is the same CSS, obviously. This is the nice part. So let's come here to the uh, CSS. Let's have a simple cube. Uh, Let's have a variable of size. Let's say the size is, um, um, I don't know, 12 EM. Uh, by the way, when I'm using sizes, I'm using EM. Um, the, the reason is because I can then, uh, it's, just, it's just a variable. EM is just a variable. So something can be uh, 1 EM, 3 EM, and what, if I want to change everything, I'm just, I'm just changing the font size, and everything's changing accordingly. So I'm just using EM as a variable, as 15x. Um, so the cube obviously is position absolute. I'm going to give it a width of size and a height. Uh, this is, by the way, uh, why is it? Oh, OK. Yeah. Uh, and as, as I said earlier, my dream is to add just depth here, uh, but that's not going to be uh, anytime soon, obviously. So uh, it's position, uh, uh, let, let's just see it right now, background, yeah. So here we have a white square, right? So far so good? Great. Yeah. Great. Uh, let's just center it. How do you center it? How do you center it with uh, div? Uh, you can use a flexbox, but the old method is using transform translate Minus 50%, minus 50% means I'm moving it. We're going to use a lot of transforms today. Uh, so this is just, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm putting you, uh, easy, um, easing you in. Uh, I'm, translate means move. The first, the first is uh, uh, move on the x. The second is on the y. So I'm just moving it 50, uh, 50 uh, minus, minus 50. So I'm just moving it to the middle. Uh, so here it is in the middle. And let's leave it for now. Um, Let's put, let's talk about the sides because I don't want to see this cube itself. I want to see the sides. So let's have a div. So it's each one of those divs inside of this cube. It's obviously going to have a position absolute because it needs to be position absolute to the, to the cube and have an inset zero. Me, inset zero means I'm going to fill the whole, uh, the whole space of my container. So let's have another background. Let's say it's uh, red but with little opacity inside of it. And here we go. So now, let's add a very simple animation here. Uh, let's call it a rotate, uh, 20 seconds, infinite. Uh, infinite means I want this animation to loop forever. Uh, and this is the, the animation count. And linear is the timing function, because I want the rotation to be smooth. So I'm just moving, using linear. And uh, let's say, uh, if you have any questions, by the way, now is the time. 
so let's have the simple keyframes. Excuse me? Yeah. What is the ampersand below the? OK, so uh, I am using SAS uh, or SCSS specifically. And this is uh, the, the syntax for nesting. Uh, I'm going to show you. Let's, let's hide it for a second. Uh, what, what you see here, it actually renders. Let's see the compiled. CSS. So it's rendered to cube and cube div. So the end is like the original class. <coughs> okay. So you see, uh, the reason it's just nesting is just more comfortable to, to nest thing together, just as, as a block. The dollar size is also SAS. The dollar size, yeah, it means uh, SAS variables. Uh, we are going to talk about SAS, uh, I hope, about SAS mixins and uh, loops. So uh, hang in there. Um, so yeah, let's have a simple transform of rotate. Uh, a rotate is another transform function, means to rotate something. And I want to rotate it. You can rotate and move everything on three axes. On this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, and this is the z-axis. And I want to rotate the cube, just for now, on the, uh, on the y-axis. This is the y-axis. I want to rotate it around the y-axis. So I'm going to say rotate y to 360 degrees. OK, and now I have. I forgot. If you see me, uh, uh, if you see me uh, doing a, mist a mistake, uh, correct me. Um, what am I missing? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. So uh, I'm using uh, obviously a translate here. I transform here, so this transform uh, uh, deleted. So yeah, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna put uh, from yeah. Okay, from uh, zero to 360 degrees. Let's we don't we don't need this. Um, yeah, sorry. This is the syntax now. Now? Yeah, OK. So now I have a block, and it's rotating around the y-axis. Excuse me, I made a mistake. Uh, let's remove this one. And now I need to position each one of the, of the cube sides according to this cube. So let's start with the, very fr the easiest one. And I'm, I am going to use nth child for this. I could probably uh, put a class for each one of those divs, like a class of top, bottom, left, right. It is possible. Uh, I'm just normally using f child here. So the first one, the first child, that's, it's, it's the easiest one. I want to push the, uh, uh, the one forwards, OK? So if I want to push it forward, if I want to move it, what uh, function am I going to use? Translate. translate, great. And I'm going to translate it on which, uh, on which axis? On the, on the z axis, exactly. So I'm going to write translate z. And I'm going to uh, move it, um, obviously, 5 times 0 0.5, because I want to move half the way, and the back one would move half the way to the back. OK? So I did a lecture about individual transforms, and we're going to talk about individual transforms, and this is the reason I'm confusing them right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I could, by the way, just use, uh, uh, we're going to talk about individual transforms later on. So here you see already the, the first div. It's right here. Uh, this one, do you all see it? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. yeah, OK. So is it understandable? I just push it forward. The cube rotates, and, you, and we can see the, the front face. So now help me. How am I uh, positioning the second one? The second one, I want it to be the, the one from the back. So how do I do it? Minus. Minus, minus OK. So this is one way, OK? I do, I do uh, size minus 150, and now I have the front and the back, right? OK? Yeah, no. And I'm going to explain why. I have two divs. So this is the first one. I said this is the front, right? And the second one, I, I, let's say it's the back. So let, look at the text. Uh, when, when you look at the text of the front, 
it's on the front. But when the back side is, when the cube is flipped over, when you're looking on the back side, <laughs> you're actually looking at the back of the, of the, of the element. And we don't, want to, we don't want to do it if we're going to add text to it, if we're going to add patterns to it, if we use back face visibility for some reason. We want to look at the face of each element. So what we need to do is rotate it 180 degrees. Now, we can obviously uh, move it uh, like this and then do a rotate around Y of 180 degrees. Uh, and it would work, OK? But the order in which uh, we put things also, uh, also matters. Uh, you see here, so you see now it works. I am going to move this rotate mm, to the front of the, before the translate. And when I move the rotate, the, when I move the order of these functions, so you can see now uh, it's, not, it's not OK. Why? Because I first rotated it and then push it backwards. But I don't need to push it backwards anymore. Now, after I rotated it, I need to push it forward. So I'm going to put it back to uh, 0 0.5 degrees. So now I have two, uh, two divs. OK? So far, everything's OK? So, I have a question. Yeah. Where's that transparency from? Uh, from the color here. Um, this color. Uh, so I'm using a four-digit uh, four hex. The, the fourth digit is, is the alpha channel. If you're using three-digit hex, it's red, green, blue, just like six digits. Only each digit is just one. And the fourth one is just like using eight-digit hex. OK? Um, <clears throat> I, I could, if you want, let's, uh, let's do a simple. Uh, and OK? More unsuitable? Great. Um, yeah, it's, it changed the color a bit, but it, it's OK. So uh, OK, so help me. How do I position the third one? I want the third one to be the right one. How do I position it? Yeah? Uh, it's not really an answer. Why is the text gone? Why is that? The text gone? There's no text anymore. Yeah, because I deleted it from the uh, HTML. I thought it was because of the opacity. No, 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 just deleted it from the HTML. Uh, so how do I set the third one? Yeah? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to tell you. So before the X, uh, what, so, so what we're doing here, the back one, I'm rotating it 108 degrees, and then I'm pushing it forward. So I can just, uh, the third one, I can just rotate it uh, 90 degrees. So just 90 degrees, again, on the Y axis. Uh, and now I have right here one on the right. And obviously, uh, the fourth one is the, uh, on the same idea. I just move it 270 degrees. OK? Um, OK, so now what about the top and bottom? Yeah, so exactly. I'm just going to copy these. And instead of rotating on the y axis, I'm just going to rotate it on the x axis. And now I have all six. Shalom, Andre. And now I have all six sides. Uh, here, uh, you know, this is supposed to be five and six, and I can now remove the, the background color of the cube itself. You can see the, the white here in the middle, this is the cube itself. I obviously don't need it. Uh, and now it doesn't actually seem like a cube, it just looks like a silhouette of a cube. Uh, I can actually, like, uh, I can use different colors for each one of those sides, but just a nice little tip uh, what we can do is actually use box shadows. And I'm going to use a very simple box shadow, like 0, 0, and let's say uh, 5 times half. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to use an inset. So I'm just going to throw the shadow inside of each one of those uh, sides. And now we'll, we'll get a bit more. Yeah, it's supposed to be a black, obviously. No. Uh, What am I missing out? Hmm? Mama? Mama? Oh. 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 Yeah, okay. 
So now you can actually see what, what, what I've done here is just added an inset, uh, uh, an inset of a shadow for each one of those cubes. So now each one of those sides has it. We can actually see it, and we can see the cube moves. And of course, now it only moves on the uh, x-axis. Let's instead of uh, instead of red, let's make it white, a bit brighter. Um, so instead of uh, on the y-axis, I can actually rotate it on other axes as well. So for example. Uh, let's say from rotate x, 0, and let's say rotate x, let's say 720, I don't know why. So now I have uh, something that is rotating. Ah, okay. Now I have something that is rotating on two axes. What am I missing again? Yep. Okay, any questions about that cube? Can we move forward to uh, bigger things? Yeah? So now if I'm going to ask each of you to build me a cube with pure CSS, how many of you can build me a cube? OK, it's a bit more hands. S still not everybody. OK, but let's uh, go. OK, so um, I'm actually going to, I don't know if I'm going to fork it. I'm going to delete it. I'm going to start a new one. You know what? I'm going to start a new one. Um, Yeah, so this is the same build, the same uh, beginning that we've seen uh, before. I have a scene, I have the same uh, variables inside here. Oh, wait, I forgot to tell you about this. Uh, so what is the transform style preserve 3D? First of all, let's see that if I'm going to cancel it out, uh, what I'm just seeing is just, uh, yeah, just a cube. So here's the thing. I'm setting the perspective right here, uh, right up there on the body itself. And, uh, the, and, and what I want is each one of those kids, I want everybody of the, of the kids to live in the same 3D space. Now, I can set each one of those div another uh, perspective, but it's, it won't be the same thing because if something turns, the perspective turns with it. So in order to have the same, uh, it's called vanishing point, to, so all the elements would live in the same 3D world. I'm using this property, it means preserve 3D. It's the transform style preserve 3D, meaning that all the transforms that I'm doing is relative to the parent's perspective. So everything is living in the same space as it is. What does okay? perspective mean? What does perspective mean? Yeah, why you need that? Oh, this perspective. Yeah. Now you're setting this. Okay. Uh, anybody knows, by the way? You know what it means, right? Okay, what it means? So this is the, the very common uh, answer. Uh, it means how much uh, the distance from, the, from the, the center of the axis. The center of the axis is the center of the screen. So imagine an uh, imaginary point uh, like 800 pixels here. OK, I'm sorry, I moved from the camera. Uh, OK, so Im imagine 800 pixels forwards. So, but it's not exactly true because there's a, a, like a larger truth to that because the, the whole thing about perspective is it giving us uh, uh, depth. So if I'm moving uh, something closer, if I'm moving something backwards, it, be, it, it, it becomes smaller or larger, right? If you take something uh, and you, you move it uh, closer to your face, it looks bigger. If you move it farther to your face, it looks smaller. This is the basic principle of perspective. But if I'll change this perspective to like, let's say 8,000, I won't see the cube any smaller. Yeah, I won't see the cube any smaller. It will be a bit different, but it won't be any smaller. If I do like a small number, like let's say uh, 180, okay? I, I, now, now it will most definitely look different. I'm gonna, you're gonna, yeah, it looks very different, okay? But if you look at the cube itself, Okay, let's say I make it a bit like 300 pixels. If you look at the cube itself, it's, it's not getting any bigger. Uh, and the reason is we are always looking at the viewport. 
the viewport is constant and it's not moving. So if I'm moving uh, backwards, excuse me, I'm also I'm always looking to the to the viewport. So my my viewing angle is becoming much narrower. Uh, and if I'm moving very very close, I'm still looking at the viewport, but now my viewing angle is very very wide. It's like setting a, a camera a camera lens, right? When I'm zooming into something, I'm not actually moving closer to something. I am moving the lens of the camera a bit farther from the sensor. I'm making the uh, the viewing angle narrow. And, and so things look bigger. So this is the, uh, the so when you are setting perspective, you're not just setting the the, the, the length, which is true. Okay, you are setting the point, but you're also setting. It's much more uh, important. You're setting the viewing angle, and this is why I said in the beginning that I'm always using the scene to move things, and I'm not using the perspective. The perspective, once I set it, it's kind of con constant, and it's normally around eight hundred thousand. It doesn't really change a lot in these numbers. Any other now questions? OK, thanks. So um, yeah, I'm going to start a new, uh, a new div, a new uh, project. And here, in <coughs> excuse me, inside the scene, I'm going to put my game. So my game, I'm going to call it uh, backgammon. And inside of those, this backgammon, and this is the board I'm going to build. Uh, and the first thing, when I build something, I look at it, OK? So look at it. Uh, it's, there's actually, it's it made out of two parts, OK? Uh, and those two parts are pretty identical. So we're going to treat it like that. I'm going to put inside here. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to do, uh, let's call it a board. Oops. But we're going to do two of them, OK? And you know, for now, that's it, OK? By the way, I do have this with a lot of notes that I've written down. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping I'm, we'll get to everything that is actually in there. Uh, let's get to the CSS. Here in the CSS, let's do a uh, bad game. And this is the, the main game. Obviously, it's going to be position uh, relative. So everything going to be relative to this, uh, to this game. And let's have the board. And oh. Mm, yeah, but I'm not, don't know if we're going to get to that today. OK, let's, uh, let's continue for now. Uh, so the board, um, I do want to make a lot of uh, a few uh, uh, variables, so uh, size variables. And the reason I want to use it, so if I want to change the size later on, it would be very, very easy. And the basic size I'm going to use is, as I said, 1EM. And it's going to be the size of the piece, OK? The size of the, the playing piece is going to be 1EM on 1EM. So let's get, just, just write it here. Uh, let's say piece size, piece size, 1EM. So now let's talk about the, the size of the board. Um, first of all, the inner width, obviously, how much is it? 6 cm. Yeah, great. OK, so OK, you're you with me. OK. Uh, inner width is going to be 6 cm. Uh, how much is the height? Hmm? Besh. <laughs> um, it's something like 15, 14, 13 is real. Depends on the, the kind of uh, board you have. Uh, I am going to use, uh, for now, let's going to use 13 uh, board inner height, let's say 13 EMs. And I have two sizes. I have the size of this border. OK? So I have the size of this border and I have the depth of the board. OK? So let's say that the border size, for now, let's say that it's 0 0.5 EM. OK? Uh, I think it should be a bit smaller, but for now it's okay. And I'm gonna have, oops, a board depth of let's say again 0 0.5. Yeah. Okay. So now I can actually calculate uh, I'm go I can calculate why doesn't it work? Yeah, okay. The OK, so what is the, the outer width and the outer height? Is obviously these two. Oops. 
Why is it? So it's these two. Ah. Right? Plus the border size times two. Uh, does everybody understand why I, why I did it? Because, okay, I'm, I'm going to just do the other one as well. So uh, we said that the inner width is 6 EM, right? And we said that each one of these widths is uh, 0.5 EM. So the outer width of each board is the, the inner width plus two uh, borders. And the outer height is the same thing, OK? So now we can actually use these variables. And we say the board is, uh, first is obviously position absolute. I'm going to say that the board uh, width and uh, height There's no autocomplete here in, uh, when you use uh, code pen, so I'm sorry. And again, so just so we can see it, here I have two boards, OK? So far, so good. By the way, as I said earlier, now I can, if the board is looking too small, I can come over here and say that the font size is, for example, 40px. And now, Everything is going to get uh, obviously bigger, uh, and everything is going to be relative to this size. Let's make it even a big, a bit bigger, 50 pixels. Yep. Okay. Any questions so far, by the way? No. So let's position them. Uh, I, I'm going to position them not uh, with uh, the translate. I'm going to use the 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 top and the left part. So first of all, the top obviously is supposed to be half of its height, right? So I can actually push it half the way up, or I can just say that it uh, can be uh, times minus 0 0.5. OK, and now it's set on the y-axis. And if I want to move it, I want to uh, uh, set them on the, uh, to the one to the left, one to the right, right? So it's two boards. So what I'm going to do again, I'm going to use this nth child. Oops. Nth child. And I'm, I'm going to say that the, the first one, actually the first one is, I want it to be the right one, so uh, it's supposed to be left of 0, but it's, we don't really need it because it's the same, because left is 0. So, but we're going to say that the second one is right 0. And now I have, no, it's supposed to be right. Yep. Yeah, uh, what, what? Oh. Right, that's right. Oh, okay. So now I have two boards. Obviously, let's uh, just look at it through the inspect so we can see that the first board is on the right because it has uh, left of zero, and the second one is on the left because they have right of zero. Okay? So this is uh, the board, but it's not obviously the board we want to see. We want to see it uh, a bit like we, we want to see it from the top. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, rotate everything on the, on the x-axis. This is the x-axis. I'm going to rotate it. Uh, I'm going to rotate right here the, back, the game itself. Uh, transform. Rotate, as I said, on the x-axis. Let's say 60 degrees. So now we can see, yeah, we can see the board like from the top. OK? Any questions? OK, so this is obviously the board when it's open. So th these two panels that we see, this is these panels, OK? We're not going to talk about, going to talk about the border in a second. But this is the panel when it's open, right? So I want to talk about when it closes. So w when I close, the, the first one, the, the right one stays as it is. But the second one moves, it, it, it rotates on the y-axis 180 degrees, right? And the, and the position and the, the transform origin is right here on the, on the right side of this, uh, of this div, right? OK, so, so let's, say for let's say for now, uh, if it's, um, yeah, this is open. Let's say if it's closed, because I want to use a, a specific class. I'm not going to use a class, but I'm going to talk about it in a second. I'm going to say that if, uh, if it's closed, uh, so what I am going to do, I'm not going to set a specific uh, 
I'm, I'm not going to go, set something about on the board itself. I am going to set custom property that's going to trickle down to the board. So the board, obviously, it's supposed to be the second one. When it's, I'm talking about the, the second one, yeah. When it's open, the, the, the rotates is, so there is zero. And when it's closed, it's supposed to be 180 degrees. So let's say uh, transform uh, rotate on the y-axis. So the default value, the default, let's say that it's closed. So the default is going to be 180 degrees. Oh, I'm going to use a var, excuse me, of, let's call it board uh, rotate y. And the default value is 100, 180 degrees. Now, obviously, now we're not going to see any change. No, it's actually it's too big. Let's make it 40 again. Uh, we're not going to see any change. Why, why, aren't we gonna, why aren't we seeing any change? Because now it is flipped 180 degrees, right? This variable doesn't set, but the, the, the exactly the origin obviously is right in the middle, so we're not going to see it. What I do need to add is a transform origin, and we say it's on the right. Right? So now uh, it's closed. Okay, and, and I can see if, we, if we're going to go to the, to the dev tools and we're going to uh, look at it, we can, yep, and we see that if, we, if I'm going to change the 180 degrees, so we can see that it actually opens up and closes, right? Okay, so it's not actually uh, done yet because there is a difference, but uh, let's make it a bit transparable so we can see it better. Uh, but uh, obviously, I want to uh, uh, first control it. So how do I control, how do I make it clickable? Anyone know the, this hack? Excuse me? Hover, okay, so hover is one, one option, okay? What I can do, and it's, very, it's actually a very good idea. Uh, so wait, wait, okay, so I, 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 want to, I want to actually explain it through the, uh, through the hover uh, property because it's, uh, it's nice. So what I can say, that if uh, the backgammon, for example, is at Hoover, okay, so I can set this variable, uh, board rotate y, to zero. Okay, so now it's closed, and when I hover over it, it's open. You can see? And the nice thing, obviously, now I don't need this class, and I can come here to the board, and I can say use transition on uh, the transform let's say, of one second. So now when I hover over it, you can see it open, right? OK, but what I don't want to use Hoover. Hoover is, is, is one option. But what I do want to, I want to use on click. And the click, to use it on click is to use uh, using a checkbox. Yeah. Uh, this is one way. Obviously, I'm just going to put a very simple input here uh, of uh, checkbox. Uh, I'm going to use an ID. Up. Uh, let's call it, uh, OK, let's call it board checkbox. So now, obviously, this whole game, this whole uh, animation is now is just a label, just a label for this checkbox. OK, so now when I click on it, you can see that the checkbox clicks on and off. OK, so nice. But what I can do is right here for the game. Uh, let's have input type yeah okay so first thing I do is obviously I, I don't want to see the checkbox so let's get it off here so let's have a display of none we don't need it and what I want to do is I want to say that if this checkbox is checked Okay, and only if it's checked, I want to set this variable. But notice that I don't want to set this variable on the checkbox itself. I want to set this variable on the sibling of the of the checkbox on the on the on the backgammon itself. So what I am doing is I'm using the sibling the sibling operator. Okay, and now I can set this variable here. So now, yeah. So now it's closed, and when I click on it, yeah, it's, a really, uh, it's not a 
Yeah, OK. Yeah, OK. When I click on it, it's open. When I click on it again, it's closed. Click, open, click, close. Why did I lose the 60, uh, the transform? Um, Why didn't, why doesn't it work, the transform? Why did the transform not work? <laughs> did I change the, the name or something? Oh. Obviously, because now, uh, so the label uh, also needs to get a uh, display of block. Yeah, OK. So the label, obviously, it's not a display block as a, as a default. So we do need to have display block. So now, here we go. When I click on it, it's open. When I click on it, it's closed. I do have an interaction, but notice when, I, when I, you look at those, two things, when they are open, so those two, two boards are next to each other, but when they close, they're not right on top of each other, there's actually a gap. The gap is the depth twice, times two, actually. So how do I do it? How do I move it upwards? Any ideas? Excuse me? No, you don't need layers. There's no layers in CSS. Everything is in the same space. So. One thing that I can do is like move it on the z-axis, right? So this is what a lot of people is doing uh, when they're moving those kind of things. But there's actually a better way. You can actually use the transform origin on the z-axis. Because right now, I've set the transform origin here um, to the right, OK? And it, if right, by the way, it's uh, 0 is the x-axis. So let's say 100%, uh, 50%. This is, again, right, OK? So now it's, it's working very well. But what I can do is also add a z-axis. And the z-axis, obviously, is the uh, board depth, OK? So now you can actually see that it moves. And when I click on it to open, it sets. Because now the transform origin is not right here in the middle. It actually moves a bit farther. So when I rotate it 108 degrees, it rotates around this axis, around the z-axis. So anybody, everybody understood why I've changed this depth? I, it's either yes or no. Yes? OK. So I have two boards. Uh, let's say for the color, uh, let's uh, use, I uh, think, what color did I use here? Burlywood. OK, let's, let's use Burlywood. Yeah. OK, so this is a basic. Maybe later on, we're going to get uh, to add uh, uh, patterns to it and everything. To, uh, if, if time allows it. Um, OK, so now I have the boards. Let's talk about the border. How do I build the border, the, the sides of each one of these boards? So if you look at the, at the wood itself, so there's actually, it's like, it's like four stretch cubes, right? And I can build them as four cubes, but that's, we already built the cube. It's not interesting. So let's look at each one of those borders as a full shape, OK? And this shape actually has nine sides, uh, uh, 10, but nine, OK? It has four sides here in the, in the center, in the, in, the, in, in the inner sides. It has four sides out, OK? And it has this top side, right? So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put inside of, this, of each board, I'm going to uh, put a simple, let's say, border. And inside of this border, I'm going to put nine divs. This didn't work, right? <laughs> yeah, OK. Border and div times nine. Nah. I to see the of mine. No? Yep, OK. 
Well, uh, he doesn't like me today. Uh, this is the, the, fun, the fun, fun thing, by the way, in, uh, in live coding. Uh, if you don't do live coding, do live coding because it's fun, because things always fuck up and it's the best thing, best feeling ever. Um, yeah, so now in, inside of each board, I have a border uh, div. Inside of this border div, I have uh, nine divs that I'm going to position. So let's start with the, it looks very similar, but eh, never mind. So let's go here to the border dot border. So this border is obviously is to be positioned absolute because I want to be positioned each one of these border. Uh, this div is going to be positioned to the parent itself. So I'm going to use position uh, position absolute and I'm going to use again the inset of zero. Um, again, let's see it. So let's paint it in white. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's, by the way, let's uh, do it uh, open as a default. So I'm just going to use the checked here. So now it's going to be open as the default and yeah, okay. Okay, so now I have the border and each, again, I have nine divs inside of it. Uh, and div, and it's, it's going to be very similar to the, to the cube we've seen earlier, okay? So I'm actually going to uh, use pretty much the, the same idea. Obviously, it's going to be position absolute. Um, but the size of each one of those uh, of uh, each one of those divs is, is very different. Uh, but I am going to use uh, the box shadow uh, thing on each one of them. Uh, so just zero zero. Uh, let's say one em for now. Uh, black inset. Inset. Um, yeah. Obviously you don't see anything because the divs is uh, nothing. So let's take the first one, and I'm going to start from from the outside in. Okay. So the first one, I'm going to take the, the nth child of one, and, and I'm really going to really, really appreciate uh, audience participation in this part. So think of the first one. Think of this outer uh, side, OK? I want to position it uh, relative to this board, OK? So first of all, what is the size of, the outer, of this outer side, the, the one that, is, that comes here in this side? What is, what is, it, what is it, the, the size? Obviously, it's going to be height of the board. Okay, so let's start. I, I always like to start with the width, and the width obviously is the the border. Oops, it's the it's the uh, thing the board uh, depth. Okay, and the height. Oops, why do I always do it? Uh, is the outer. Oops, border, outer height. Okay, so we can actually maybe see it now. Yeah, board. Yeah. Okay, so you can actually see this div. Okay, and you can see it twice because I have two boards, obviously. So you can see it here, but I do need to move it. I need to rotate it on the y-axis. Remember, this is the y-axis. I need to rotate it on the y-axis. Um, we talked earlier about uh, uh, individual transforms. Uh, so what I can do is use transform, trans, uh, rotate, uh, rotate y uh, 90 degrees, because I want to rotate it on 90 degrees. But actually, uh, well, actually, I need to rotate it minus 90 degrees because it's counterclockwise. Uh, so wh what I can do, and I'm going to use it here, instead of this transform, I can just use rotate and then say y minus 90 degrees. So uh, and we don't need this one. So I, I just want to do like a quick survey. Who thinks the second syntax is better? Really? Yeah. Okay. You can animate the first one also. It's more difficult. No. It's more difficult. Okay, what happens if you need to move you things on two axes? from two. You will not need the... Uh, so, okay, we, we are going to use this short syntax. There is benefits and there is a lot of drawbacks. Uh, I did a whole lecture about it a few weeks ago. I, I don't know. So uh, we can actually see it here, but we don't see it uh, quite well because we haven't changed the transform origin. Again, we need to move it on the left as the transform origin. So let's set the transform origin to the left side, right? So uh, now, okay, let's add to the board itself 
let's have the same animation I used on the cube, actually. But I, uh, may, may, maybe I don't. Yeah, OK. <coughs> See, I don't need this translate, obviously, but I do need the uh, rotate. And I just want to rotate it on the. Why did I copy it? <laughs> I copied something that I don't need. Uh, rotate Z. Yeah, so I, uh, what, what I'm doing here, I just add uh, a simple animation to the, to the game, just so I can move it, so, uh, just so I can rotate it so we can see the board from every direction. Um, let's add to the board itself, to the border. Uh, let's say the div had a background color of red. Again, I'm, I'm using, by the way, when I'm using animations, uh, while I'm working, I'm using very basic colors, white, black, red, blue, green. Uh, just so we could, just so I could see things, and after the the, the everything is in place, I'm I'm starting to uh, deal with colors. Uh, I I think it's better, but if you have uh, if you like to see the colors up front, you can. Uh, so this is the the first one, the first div where we positioned. Everybody saw it. It's okay. So let's talk about the second div, and I'm gonna move. Uh, I'm gonna move inwards. So I'm gonna talk about this inside div, okay? This, we did the other one, so I want to do the second one. So the second one, as far as position, okay? So first of all, the, the, I need to set the position because it's not on the top left. The, the top left, actually, the, the left is at the uh, border size, right? And the top is at border size, and obviously the the whoops, and the height is no longer the outer uh, height is the inner height, okay? Inner. And last thing that we need to change is obviously now I'm I'm not moving it minus ninety degrees. Actually, I need the left to be, you know, actually it's okay like this. Then, okay, what I plan to do is actually to do it like uh, here, zero. So now this is supposed to be uh, 90, and this is supposed to be right. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm going to use it like this. So why, why, why this is better? Again, just for the same reason I explained earlier. So now the, the face of the element is the actual face of the element and not the back of the element. Okay, so this is the second one. The third one uh, is going to be a bit different because I need to set it from the left. So it's not going to be a, a left of zero. It's going to be a right gh of zero. Um, excuse me? Yeah. Mm, yeah, okay, but... Uh, now it's, it does supposed to be minus 90 on the left, right? So this is now the, the third one, okay? And the fourth one of in this element, uh, so actually um, let's copy the, the first one because it's a, bit, it's a bit more similar to this one, I think. I'm using a lot of copy paste obviously because I'm a developer. <laughs> Um, but this is, we do need to add a right of zero here. Um, right. Okay, so I have four divs on four sides on each one of those blocks. And you can see now that it's closed, how it looks. Well, it's, well, we don't need this one. Okay, so you can see it when it's open, when it's closed. This is the, the divs. So now, this is just four. Let's, let's continue. Now I need... Uh, the fifth one. So who wants to help me with the fifth one? Come on, it's a workshop. Who wants to help me with the fifth one? Yanai. So first of all, I am using the, the x-axis and not the y-axis. So now this is supposed to be the, the, the height is the border width. And the width is obviously the border, uh, how did I call it? The border outer width. Okay. So this is the width. And obviously, I need to rotate it. I don't need to rotate it on the x-axis. I need to rotate it on the, uh, on the y's. I need to rotate it on the x-axis. <coughs> OK, so yep, 
So now we can see it here. And the, the transform origin has to be on the left. It's supposed to be on the top. Again, because I'm moving it on the x-axis. OK, so now I have, excuse me, counterclockwise. Yeah, so now I have this div right here on top. Okay, it's just like the, the first one, but I used, uh, uh, but I wrote everything uh, for, for, to use the x-axis and not the y-axis. Um, so the sixth is actually very similar again to the second one. So I need, uh, but again, the left is, uh, the, the, the top is gonna be uh, zero, uh, and the left is gonna be of a border uh, board, border, border size, right? I'm not mistaken. Yeah, okay. Uh, and excuse me. Well, where are you? Who? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So now I have this second div. Everybody see the second div right here? And again, I have two of them because I have two boards. OK, uh, two more. Don't. OK, the seventh one. So again, I have, uh, but instead of uh, a top, I need a bottom of 0. Uh, and it's pretty much the same thing. Just here it's on top. And the last one of these divs, oops. Eight. This is supposed to be the outer minus bottom. So a bit. Uh, what did I change? Oh, we don't need this one. Yeah. Okay. So a bit more difficult than the cube, but the same concept is no matter how complicated the structure you are building, what you're doing eventually is just placing div on, uh, on in different positions and relative each one of these divs to different divs. So when these divs move, they all uh, come together. Uh, so but instead, again, instead of red, let's um, uh, set the color again to Burleywood. Oops. It's just a nice light color. Yeah, OK. Let's do it uh, 0 0.5. It's going to be brighter. Yeah, OK. And obviously, I don't need this white. OK, so I have this uh, eight divs that I, that I set. But I said we have nine, right? Because the top one, we haven't set yet. So let's set this one. And I'm going to use uh, uh, something a bit weird with that. So let's use an nth child of nine. And it's, it's going to have the, the inset of 0 because I want it to be uh, the same size of the board. Uh, so let's just see it now. It's the, the, the white one is the same size of the board. But I want it to be on the depth level. So what I'm going to use is a translate. Just like using rotate, you can also use translate. Uh, and the translate gets three values. The first one is x, the second one is y, the third one is z. And obviously, I'm going to use the uh, board depth. So now I'm just moving it up, OK? So this is the box I have, right? But now I have to cut a square out of this div. How do I do it? Make it transparent. How do I do it? Oh, good, uh, one way, huh? Maybe clip path. Well, you, clip path is it's a very good idea. Um, and, and you can absolutely use it. Uh, one way to do it is just instead of using background color, I'm just going to use border of uh, uh, board size. Uh, so let's uh, say this is the cops. And obviously solid. And now I have a border. Doesn't uh, get it. Undefined variable? Have I misspelled it OK? Oh, it's, it's border size. It's not board size. Yeah, it's two uh, very similar words. I, 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 it's not, not the right choice. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, 
the border. Okay? And obviously, this uh, uh, needs to be a background color of none. Uh, none. You don't need any, uh, any background color. Um, Yeah, but why none doesn't help? <coughs> okay. Um, let's move this one to Burleywood. And I'm, yeah. Okay. So now I have a box. Any questions so far? No, don't, 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 don't. Uh, and the nice thing is, by the way, that just, uh, because we use variables, so we can change everything. I can change uh, the, the border, for example, uh, the border size. Change. The yep. Depth, yeah, let's change the depth. Uh, that's way too much. Uh, let's one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is not the size that we want, obviously. Um, what is this in the middle? Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, let's uh, get back to these values because we don't want to play around too much. Okay, so um, I'm 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 okay with, with, with time. So let's uh, let's do uh, the the triangles. Okay. So just like we did the 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 border, I'm going to use here and another div. I'm going to call it. Triangles, triangle, um, and inside of it, I'm going to use triangle. How many triangles I have in each side? Six. Twelve. Okay. Div times. Each On each board, I have uh, twelve triangles. Okay, so this is the triangles, and now let's position them. And I'm going to position them using something a bit uh, strange. Let's. We don't need the border anymore. Uh, Triangles. Hmm? Triangles. Um, again, let's see it. I normally like to see what I, the, the divs that I'm working on. Oh, I have uh, just on one side, obviously. Too bad. So let's copy it. What do you mean? You, you, you're not saying uh, give me 12 times the same that, that are positioned near <coughs> one uh, near the mm -hmm. other. But you're saying this one is here, this one is here. Well, I'm going to use loops here. OK, you can use loops that I'm going to. OK, the reason I'm, I've, I've used this one because it's very, they're very uh, uh, different from one another. So I, I could theoretically use come some sort of loop, and then I would use some sort of uh, uh, an if inside of the loop, loop instead of just instead of using two loops. Yeah, you could have done it. Here, just more comfortable of just using a, a simple, just uh, placing each one individually. Uh, like when I'm building a cube, so for the last, I, I'm building uh, the first four with with this loop normally, uh, but again, the, the second two is different. Um, so uh, let's save it for now. Okay. So let's build the triangles. I have the divs in the triangles. Yep, yep, yep. We don't need JavaScript. Border triangles. Okay, so inside I have uh, the triangles, and I'm going to use, uh, and as we've seen earlier, div, so each one of those divs is the triangle itself, and I'm going to use a position absolute because it's position absolute. The width of each one of this uh, triangle, what is the width? 1 m. 1 m. Okay, and what is the height? For now, let's say 5 m. Okay, so this is, I checked at home, it's normally roughly 5 m. Okay. And the background color, let's uh, make it a dark brown, so 420. Um, so no, yeah, we, we can actually see it, but let's, uh, let's position it uh, in the left 50% and the top 50%. So now they're all positioned uh, relative to the center of these 
of this div, okay? And I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to move them in a, in a few ways. So I'm going to use a transform. And again, I'm going to use custom properties here. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just translate it uh, on the x-axis, minus 50%. Okay? So now, they're actually uh, the, the top point of each one of these divs is centered to the board, right? The top center uh, point of each one of these divs, this, this point right here. Okay? It's in the center of the div. This is why I move it to the middle. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I need to, f to move each one of them. Uh, actually, other than just 50%, I need to move them a bit more. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use a variable of, uh, let's call it a triangle, uh, translate x, okay? And the default value is going to be 50%, okay? Uh, and what uh, the, the other things that, the, that I'm going to do is before I'm roll, uh, before moving each one of them, I want to rotate them because I have six on the top, six on the bottom, right? So I'm going to use a rotate right here. Uh, and again, I'm going to use a var of uh, triangle rotate. The, the rotate, w w when you don't set uh, an x on the rotate, so it's z. Uh, okay, rotate z. The default value is going to be, again, 0, because we do need default values every time. Okay, and now what I am going to do is use a loop. Uh, and if you, you, if you haven't used uh, SAS before, uh, or so you can use loops, mixins, functions, whatever you want. And I'm going to use a very simple loop for uh, i from 0 to 6, because I have six triangles on each side, right? One. Yeah, okay. Uh, and I'm going to select, so let's select first of all, the, the, I want to select each one of them. N not each one, I want to select the, the first one and the seventh one, okay, and then the second one and the eighth one, and so on and so on. So what I want to do is use an nth child. I wrote what? Yep. Building forms all day. Uh, nth child, and I'm going to do, and I'm not, not going to select a specific number. I'm going to use n plus 6. That's meaning that uh, it's not 6, obviously. Uh, it's not n, it's uh, i. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, no, it's 6n plus, yeah, okay, this is what I meant, uh, plus i. So, what, what we're seeing here, actually, let, let me render it, and then you can actually see it. I'm just going to put a, a dummy variable here, just so we can see it uh, renders, the, uh, can see it compiled. Uh, the compiled, oops. Oh, no. No, 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 no. There is a variable there. No, no, it's stuck. There's no, <coughs> yeah, okay, ah, Mac never got stuck. Okay, so now, let's uh, save, uh, let's see, view the compiled, excuse me, go back to the code, uh, it's stuck. I don't know why. Yeah, okay. So, so wha wha oh my god, Copen actually crashes all the time. Let's close what we don't use. Uh, I have a clean one. I, yeah. It's actually, uh, it's forgotten what I've written. Oh my God. Okay, so where were we? Uh, triangles and, oof. Position and the right? 
No, no, it, it went back, it didn't save everything. Why? <sighs> Position absolute uh, with 1 a.m. So sorry, uh, height 5 a.m. Uh, background color, let's say it's a dark background color, 420. And for each one of those divs, I have a transform, a transform of rotate. Oops. A transform of rotate. Uh, I'm working on the Z axis. So it's var uh, try uh, rotate Z. Again, zero degrees as a default. And a translate of in X var try uh, translate X uh, of zero. Okay? Top yeah. Top 50%. And, excuse me? No. I'm not used to do it. Be, uh, it no, would work. It yeah, it would work. Yeah, it's OK. Yeah, inset 50%. I'm so not used to do it. Uh, because I'm not used to setting inset and then setting the width and the height. Uh, but yeah, it worked great. Um, oh, so the, this is minus 50%. OK, so now, save. Yeah, OK. Uh, now let's. Uh, Yep, now let's build uh, the for loop that we've talked about. Uh, so this is the nth child, and the nth child, as we said, we need 6n plus, uh, uh, plus i. OK, this is what I want to explain. And again, I'm just going to put a ver dummy variable here so we can see it. I'm going to save it. So we can see it rendered. I'm hoping it's, yeah, OK, so now it works. So this is what, what's going on. Uh, this is what the, the loop renders, OK? So it renders this div I've, I've written, but it renders it six times. And every time, it changes this i. So 6n plus 0 means it picks every six elements. 6n plus 1 means it picks every one after 6 element. 6n plus 2 means the second one and the third one and so on and so on. OK? So I'm actually here, I'm picking the first one and the seventh one because I want to move the first one and the seventh one the same amount after I rotate them uh, 1 and 8 degrees. OK? So this is why I'm using this loop. And actually, before the loop, I'm actually going to use, I'm go just going to say, uh, that the nth child uh, of n plus 7, so it means from the 7, uh, from the seven object forward, OK? So for them, I'm going to set the try uh, rotate, rotate z, to 180 degrees. Oh, obviously, but I do need to change the transform origin to the top, OK? Because I want, I want them to set differently. Set from the top to rotate 180 degrees. So now I have, yeah, I have the, the 6 here and the 6 there, OK? Actually, I'm going to do something a uh, bit weird. I'm going to use uh, the minus 50% before the rotate. And here is going to be the 0. Yeah, OK, so I have 6 from the bottom, 6 from the top, OK? And now I'm going to set here this, uh, this variable, the translate x, OK? So how much is this variable supposed to be? Uh, I need to move from the, 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 the far side. I need to move it um, 3m, right? So I think it's minus 3 plus I, EM, um, dollar, only money in your head. 
Uh, yeah, okay, so uh, it's not three, it's uh, two and a half. Because I already moved it 50%, right. Um, yeah, okay, so now it's all uh, right in position, but I do want to add one more thing. I'm going to use a translate uh, on the Y. Uh, let's say, I, think I just want to push it forward. So 1.5 a.m. because uh, 1.5 a.m. because we have used 13 a.m. as the inner width, and it's 5 a.m. on each side, so it's 5 times 2, it's 10. It's 3 a.m. My, divided by 2, it's uh, 1.5 a.m. Okay, so now I have 12 triangles, right? But it's not triangles, it's, it's rectangles. So how do I make them triangles? Somebody, clip path, yeah, somebody talked about earlier clip path, and I am going to use clip path here. Uh, and uh, a very simple clip path, by the way, okay, so and I have this here. Um, uh, this, yeah. So uh, a very simple clip path. So this is the, the square I have right now, right? So I'm just going to use three points uh, from, up, yep, yep, like one, two, three, okay? And this, uh, this point, obviously, it's a zero at 100%, right? Because zero at x, uh, on the x-axis, 100% on, uh, on the y-axis. And this is 50% zero, and this is 100% and 100%. So I'm going to come back to the, it's not this. I'm going to use a polygon. Yeah. Uh, so we said the first one is 0, 100%, the second one is 50%, 0, and the third one is 100%, 100%. And if I haven't did any mistakes, which I normally do, I now have 12 triangles, right? Yeah, no! Stop, stop, come on, come on. Let's remove this white uh, background. Um, okay, but uh, if you look at the, at the board, so these triangles, we need to differentiate them from the first one to the second one. Wait, uh, from, we need to, to differentiate one from, the, the, from one to the next. So how do I do it? Uh, first thing is I can actually, what I can do is come here. Uh, instead of the color, I can set a variable uh, of color. Okay, and then set a different one. And then I can just set and nth. I, I, I do like nth child, by the way, if you haven't noticed by far. Uh, so there's an nth child of odd or even, by the way, you can. And then you can just set the color to, uh, let's say, red. Okay, so now every other one. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, so now each one is red, but I don't like red. What I do like to do is something that uh, I actually have in my, my, my board at home. This is not my board from home. I do have like this professional big board with uh, uh, marble uh, pieces. Um, so what we can do is uh, instead of this color, we don't want the color. Let's, uh, let's have the same color. Uh, what I'm, I want to do, I want to actually uh, set a different shape. I want the, the, the every other one to be like, uh, like, yep. like this one, okay? And, and I want the, 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 the color part to be the, the middle one. So I'm just going to need to add one point, because I have one, two, three points to the clip path. I just want to add, to add this fourth point. So uh, again, up, again, I'm going to come here, and this clip path, I'm uh, yeah, probably because of the uh, this one. Uh, this is not a very strong computer. I seems to. Uh, yeah, now it's better. Uh, so var. Uh, uh, let's say let's call it clip path, and this is obviously the default value. And what I do need to set is here instead of color. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Because I'm, again, first of all, it's code pen. And when you're running on code pen, it's, uh, so it, it's, it's moving. Wait. Yeah, OK, so now it's smoother. And now I actually have uh, this line. What? How? OK, this is what I, what I added here. I added another point here. So now I have like one, two, three, four, and it obviously sets back to the fifth. Okay? Mm. Yeah. 
let's save. Okay. So, do you have a board? We can click on it. It closes, it's, but it's not okay. And we can now click on it, it's open. Uh, but, but okay, so when it's open, it's okay, but when it's closed, it's not cool. So, what are we going to do? We need to uh, fix this closed side. Uh, and we're going to do two things. First of all, we're going to come uh, right here to the, uh, let's come to the triangle because we don't want to see the triangle on the other side. So what we are going to use, we're going to use backface visibility. Backface visibility is a property that says, I, am I going to show this, uh, this uh, property, this uh, element, when, it's, when I'm looking uh, at it from the back? So let's say the backface visibility is hidden. But, now, but you don't need the triangles from both sides. So, yeah, so now when it's closed, you don't see the, the back side, you don't see the triangles, only when it's open. Uh, so let's add, uh, while we're here, let's add a, a simple uh, uh, che che checkers uh, simple on, on the back of the board. Um, what I'm going to do, actually, I think I have it here, yeah. Uh, so right here on the on the second on the bo on the board right here on the second element because this is the second element right so what I'm going to add any questions by the way no so what I'm going to add is a very simple uh, after okay after needs obviously uh, if you have a question you can ask me I trust me I can answer better dude. Dude, do you have questions to ask me? No, just on the back mobile. Okay. No. No. Forget about. Uh, yeah. So the after is a uh, content of uh, zero. I'm gonna use a position of absolute. Obviously, I'm gonna set it on the top for the fifty percent, and you're gonna see why in a, in a second. Uh, 50 percent and, and I'm gonna set it to the right end. Uh, why to the right end? Because it's open from the, the right end. So I'm gonna uh, use right. What the hell is going on here? Yeah, thank you. Right of zero. Um, the width, I'm gonna use a width of 90 percent. So uh, I'm, I'm actually painting this part right now, okay? So you can see the width is not 100%, uh, but it's, I'm, I'm going to use like 90% for now. Stay. Yep. Uh, let's say 90%, and, and the aspect uh, ratio of them is constant, because if I'm, if I'm moving the, the size of the board, I still don't want to move the, the, asp the aspect ratio. So I'm actually going to use aspect ratio of 1 of uh, uh, 1 divided by 2, because it's, it needs to be uh, twice as high as it uh, white. Let's, uh, let's just see it for now. Yeah, OK. This is, uh, this is OK. Uh, what I do need to do is obviously uh, move it. Uh, let's transform, translate uh, y minus 50%. The reason I, I use, I, I put it on 50% on the top and then translate white minus 50%. So if I choose, uh, change the height of the, of the board, it would still be in the, in the middle. Um, so yeah, it's OK. And what I'm going to do now is add a background image. Eh, not a background image. Uh, background image. And what I'm, I'm, the background Im image that I'm going to use is, uh, is Repeating conic gradient. Who here has used repeating conic gradient in their life? Yeah? OK. That's, that's more than I expected. Um, yeah, seriously. So let, let's do a very uh, simple one. So let's do uh, from black. And the black is going to be from 0 to 90 degrees. And let's do a, a, a white from zero, uh, from 0 to 180 degrees. degrees. OK. Yep, OK, but it's obviously not the, the way it's supposed to be. So what I'm going to do is use the background, uh, the background size, uh, because the size of each, uh, of each uh, 
square is 25%, right? So uh, let's say it's, it's 50% of the width, 25% of the height. So 50%, 25%. Yeah. And let's add, let, I'm, I'm going to do it a bit, I'm uh, going to add a bit trans transparency. So again, I'm just going to use a, a bit of alpha. And for the final touch, let's add a border. Uh, but the border, uh, I'm, I'm going to use just a solid and a color. I'm not going to give it a width, so you don't, go, so you won't see anything. Uh, and now, I'm, okay, so you will see because it's default. Uh, but I'm going to use a border uh, width of uh, let's say two pixel, two pixel, two pixel, and zero. So now the the right side has no border. No, oh, it's actually supposed to be different. This is zero, two pixel. Yeah, it's supposed to be on the other side, the left side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now I have border on all each, on all three sides, but not on the on the side that is open. And now uh, I have obviously forgot to use <laughs> the back face visibility of hidden. Oh, because it's the other way around. Ow. Um, so let's, OK, so I'm not going to use it. What I am going to do is if you want to hide it, so uh, again, just a simple hack, just use a translate of Z of one pixels, because one pixel is enough. Or it's supposed to be minus one pixel. Yeah, minus one pixel. Uh, what I'm, I'm actually moving it upwards one pixel, so now we can see it, and uh, we won't see it on the other side. Um, any questions? Oh, it's already. Uh, any questions? Yeah. yeah. About the, uh, the thing is going the gradient. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, we have three types of gradients in CSS. We have linear gradient from side to side, top to bottom, straight line. We have radial gradient from the center of a circle that's moving out. Okay, and we have conic gradient that is from one point around a circle. Okay, so if you look at each one of those uh, squares, let's look at just one square. So it's just uh, we're going black 90 degrees, white 90 degrees, black 90 degrees, white 90 degrees. We have also a lecture of a minute in our channel in YouTube. We talk about only yeah, I, I, did, I did 25 minutes on conic gradient, and a friend of ours asked me, how do you, what do you have to say about for 25 minutes on conic gradient? And I had like, I, I have two days. Uh, yeah, so, it, it, but you can do great things, and you can, can create great patterns and great shapes just using conic gradient. Uh, so if you don't know, if you haven't used conic gradient ever, uh, so yeah, feel free to use it. Um, so last thing, uh, so far, last thing, uh, pieces. We, have, we need pieces to play with. Uh, I, I don't know if we have time to build ev uh, all of them. Uh, but what we are going to do, just d build one for uh, example, uh, one or two just for example. And the way I want to do it is, first of all, I want to put each one of those pieces inside of a triangle, right? Because each one of the pieces belong to a triangle. But I already uh, clip path the triangle. And I, I can't put anything in it because everything I put in it will be cut off. So what I want to do is, first of all, uh, the triangle themselves here, uh, instead of a triangle, where is it? Yeah, OK. Um, I'm going to use a simple, yeah. This is, OK, so this is what each one of those div. Uh, and I'm going to use, uh, again, and after, so it's, uh, I'm just adding a, a, a another div to each one of those uh, to each one of those triangles. Uh, has a content of uh, nothing. Has a, a position uh, absolute. Obviously, has an inset of zero, and it has this color. And uh, the, the background color is now on the. Uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Um, where is it? Yeah. So the background color is on the after itself, and the clip path is on the after itself. And and by the way, I don't need to change this part 
because I, I'm still setting the, the variable on the triangle itself and not on the, on the after, but the variable trickles down to the, the after. This is why I actually like to using them. Um, yeah, so now, now I have everything on the after, so I can actually use the, the, the triangle to put the pieces inside. So let's come uh, inside to the HTML. And it's stuck. <sighs> yeah, OK. Um, let's select a, a random triangle. And inside here, I'm going to use a piece. And inside of those pieces, as I said earlier, this is, I want to show you how to build something uh, that is layered. So inside of this piece, I'm going to use an, just an I element. Uh, you can use divs. I don't know why when I'm working with layers, I'm just normally we're working with eyes. And let's say that we have 10 layers for each one of those pieces. OK, so this is piece I. OK? So what I now I need to do is come here, do a piece. Uh, so first, obviously, uh, let's see. I don't even know in which uh, triangle it is. Uh, the width is 1 EM. This is the, what we set in the beginning, uh, 1 EM. Uh, let's say the background color uh, for now, uh, let's use the, 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 the dark one. Let's use white. Um, where is it? Yeah, OK. So this is my, uh, my, my piece, so, so called. OK. Uh, and now what I want to do is each one of those eyes inside of them, OK? Uh, it's obviously position absolute. Uh, and it needs to, be, to have a border radius. Oops. Border radius of uh, 50%. OK, uh, the background color of each one of them is going to be uh, a bit different. But uh, let's say, again, for now, let's say uh, call it the burly wood. So now we can actually see that we have, we don't see. Why don't we see it? You can see that it got the class. Uh, oh, because it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, OK. So now th this, this circle that you, you see inside of this uh, white square, this is uh, actually all 10 pieces. And what we need to do is just move each one of them just one pixel up. So what we're going to do here is going to do uh, transform, translate, and we're going to translate it on the z-axis, right? Uh, I'm going to do again var, uh, let's call it piece translate z and 0. And again, we're going to use a very simple uh, loop here uh, for i from 0 to 10, because I have a 10. Um, and I'm going to use uh, an nth child. The nth child that I'm going to select is a uh, i plus 1, because uh, the, the I'm using a 0 index and the CSS using a 1 index. The first element is 1, it's not 0. Um, so the piece translate z. Um, let's say that it's just i pixel. OK, and now unexpected nth. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, yep. <laughs> and now, yep, OK, so we can't actually see them, but it's here. So to see, to see them better, I would, uh, I would add another thing. I'm using a border uh, for each of them. And the border is going to be actually thick, let's say 10 pixels. Um, solid, but the color of the border, I'm going to use, um, <coughs> let's say actually use RGB, RGBA, uh, just for the heck of it. So zero, uh, let's say use the old syntax, zero, and here I'm going to use a, an alpha. And the reason I want to use, because I want the first one to be uh, very dark, and I want the, 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 the 
the top one to be lighter, so it would have like shade. So let's have a var of, uh, let's call it alpha. Uh, no, let's, uh, let's call it A for now. And so now A, again, let's say that is, uh, right? Yeah, oh, okay, but it's uh, the other way around, excuse me. So it's one minus, okay? So now each one of those pieces, I can actually remove those, uh, this white background. Um, and actually, let's say that it's 0 0.9, because the top one is uh, 0 0.9, so because I, I, don't, I want, don't want to see it, great. So it's already great. Um, so, but a few more things I want to, the, 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 the top one, the nth child of, uh, uh, supposed to be the last child, excuse me, uh, last child. I'm going to give it a box shadow because I want the, the box shadow to be on the inside. So let's have the 0, 0, 0 0.5 EM uh, black. So again, uh, inset. So I'm using again uh, the shadow on the inset. But for the first child, oh, because it's the border. Actually, I don't need it. Let's uh, set it for the, just for the night. Yep. Nope. Oh. Uh, I don't want to set the border on the tenth one. Oh, but I need to bo set the border on the. Okay, okay. Um, so why doesn't it work? Mm, okay, so let, let's let's let, let's leave leave the, the box shadow for now. But what we can do is actually add uh, for the first child. Uh, we do need to add uh, the box shadow, but on the outside. So now, excuse me. Child, uh, yeah. So the first child is actually the bottom one, and I want the bottom one to have the shadow outside, so I have the, set, the shadow uh, outside. And again, so uh, you can actually now take uh, a piece, by the way, I think we need to set all of these in, uh, yeah. Okay, so you can actually uh, do like uh, two pieces in the same place or add like pieces to a different uh, triangle. Okay, let's save it, okay. And now the last thing that we need to do is actually set a position to each one of them. Uh, now we can actually use uh, what I've done in, in a different uh, uh, version, just I've added like a, a, a data, okay, of uh, let's say like a, a data of position and, and give it a value of one, two, three, four, four. Uh, but we used the nth child so far, so let's use the nth child. Uh, I think it's going to be easier. Uh, and I have like five, spot, five spots on each one of them, right? So let's, uh, right here, let's have, it's, it's the last loop for the uh, square. Uh, for i from 0 to 5. And okay, so the, the position, I need to, to, to position each one of them. Uh, or actually, I need to translate each one of them. Position, translate, position. I think I need to position them because if I want to the bottom, uh, so the bottom zero, so now it's going to be uh, right uh, at the bottom, right? And if the bottom is 1 EM, so it's going to be the next one, okay? So this is what I'm actually going to do. I'm just setting the bottom as a variable, uh, piece, bottom, okay? Zero as, a, as the default, uh, yeah. And what I need to do now is here in the loop, I need to set the nth child of each one of them, uh, nth child. Uh, So now, once I have two, so the second one is at the second position. Actually, let's here in the eye, instead of zero, let's say uh, the inset is of 2%. Uh, because I want, uh, I want the, the size to be a bit smaller. I want, this, I want to have like a small gap here between them. 
Um, yeah, so obviously I can go now go around and uh, make a lot of uh, uh, a lot of animation, a lot of uh, to add a lot of animation, to add a lot of uh, interactions. I can uh, set the click, for example. Okay, so uh, uh, one tip for now, because I don't have too much time. Um, if I want to actually interact with each one of those uh, pieces now, I can't, or I kind of can't, because when I click on it, it closes. So what do I do? Uh, one, one option is instead of using checkbox, you can use a radio. And when you use a radio, so actually I need to change the radio also here. Okay. I have a feeling it's this one. Whoa! This is new. <sighs> Don't think I saved it. Oh, shh. I just didn't save it. Uh, Okay, so here instead I need to change it to radio. Yeah, okay, so now uh, I, I need to remove it. So now if I have uh, a, a, closed, uh, a closed board, I can click on it and it's open and when I click on it again, it doesn't close because the radio button never, uh, you can't uncheck a radio button. If you do want to uncheck a radio button, uh, what you do need to add is have uh, like a name here. Uh, let's have a name of uh, foo. Okay, and what we can do is add right here on the bottom, we can add another label uh, for, for the same uh, board actually. Should work. Why is it? Yeah, but it's not. Uh, hmm? Where is the? No, 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 no. Oh, okay, no. Same position relative. Oh, okay, okay. Let's have it. Uh, let's have it outside. Oh, it's, it's outside of the. Si no. Okay. Okay. So now, uh, uh, because it's flat, so it's right on top of, uh, of the other. But no, I, I could probably. Uh, uh, I should uh, position it uh, positive. But when I open it and I click on it, it's one close. But I can set a different button that when I click on it, ah, I didn't set the name. So now it's open, here it's open, and when I close on the close, it closed. Okay. So because what, what I'm doing, I'm actually setting different radio buttons, okay? Uh, I, I don't actually like this. Uh, it's an option, but I don't really like this uh, uh, as much. Um, yeah, so I think we kind of uh, used up our time. Any questions up until now? Yeah. Yeah. Which one of the after? This after? Yes. So this after is for the checker. Uh, and I just wanted a, a, a different div from the board itself uh, that I that I used this uh, background image on it. So I needed a different size, different aspect ratio. I, I needed to uh, push it, translate to, uh, up one pixel. So I, I just, I, I needed a different div. I could have put another div in the, in the markup and then style this div. Uh, but normally when it's something like this, I just like to use pseudo elements. Pseudo elements just, I, I call it the superpower of divs because it turns every div to three divs. So why not use it? Uh, but you could absolutely put another div inside of it and then just style this div. Any other questions? Okay, so how can you take this and, and uh, like, 
few steps ahead. Any ideas? What would you do? Oh, yes. Well, you could add more interaction, obviously. The first thing I, I, do, I did, uh, so I, I did try to take it a, a, a level for, uh, step forward. Um, yeah, so the first thing I did uh, is I added patterns uh, to the uh, wood itself. Uh, so this is not actually CSS. I'm actually using uh, a, a pattern, a, a JPEG pattern. I can show it to you. I think I can show it to you. Uh, yeah, it's here. Um, I, I will release this code in the end of this session so you can see everything. So it's just a pattern. The, the white that you see is actually uh, uh, transparent. So this is why when I put this pattern over any color, so it looks like it's wood. Um, I added an anima entrance animation, and the animation is very easy. It's just I'm, I'm using uh, uh, Translate Z. Uh, and, uh, and, and what I, I, I did add uh, a random on the, on the timing, on the duration. Uh, by the way, you can use a uh, random, uh, obviously. Uh, and this is uh, the close button, uh, uh, as you saw. And this is a step, one step uh, next. And the next step after that is actually starting and actually using real world interactions. And real world interactions, sadly, is not yet uh, uh, fully ready with, uh, with CSS. But you can absolutely use uh, JavaScript. And JavaScript and CSS work, works amazing together. Um, so I actually build a fully operational, whoop, wait, fully operational game uh, that you can actually play. Uh, so uh, this is a new game. I play, start a new game. And actually, now you can actually see this is the player one is starting. But if I refresh it and I try it again, so OK, now it's again number one. Yeah. Uh, it, it does random. Sometimes it's one, sometimes it's two. Of course, it might like it's always going to be one. Of course, of course. <laughs> yeah, OK, so now it's two. Yeah, just so you can see that it's actually random. And uh, you can roll the dice. And there's two dice, just like we saw, that's actually rolling. And uh, yeah, six, two. So it actually marks uh, the, the, the options. So if I click on this one, uh, I, I can change it to uh, two. And this one is going to move to six. And when I, you, I can, uh, you can redo. And when I redo, I can actually redo. And uh, the nice thing is that when you, uh, the bad thing is that when you do done, uh, so the whole board actually flips 180 degrees and it's the turn of the other player. And that is very, very confusing. I tried it with a few uh, test players. After three turns, they were like, no, my head is hurt. Uh, I, I, I understand them. Yeah, they so play the, the same, uh, they play on the same screen, obviously. And then you, play, you press down, and you, you stick down the direction. It's, it's very, very confusing. It's working. By the way, this game is fully operational all the way to the end. And when you finish, uh, it it's, uh, spells out uh, you win, and it's great. Uh, but I don't like it, the whole uh, uh, turning uh, thing. So the next step, yes, there is always the next step, is either uh, building a, a server, so two players can play on different devices, or uh, one, the, the other uh, option is one player against the computer, which means I need to teach the computer how to play backgammon. Um, so I went uh, to the second option, uh, but it's not, that's not done yet. Uh, but I'm, I'm right in the middle of teaching a computer to play backgammon, and it's, it's really interesting. <laughs> mm. <laughs> there, there's actually uh, there's written algorithms that I don't want to use. Uh, it's, this is the fun of doing things alone. Right? Uh, yeah, but I, I started a new job two weeks ago, so pff, I didn't have time to finish it. Uh, yeah. I thought uh, I thought about it, yeah. but I'm uh, I'm actually looking about uh, mobile users and splitting them. Uh, yeah. So uh, mobile users makes uh, more more sense uh, either using a server or using. Uh, so for mobile users, you can actually take the player one and player two, and only this uh, this box move to the other side. No, so yeah, but but, the, but I don't but but then I don't want one one player to 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 play from the other direction. Uh, it's, uh, oh, but, but, but I don't want it to be flat. I want it to be uh, 3D. I want, I want it to be. Uh, if, if I would use it as a flat, yeah, it's, it's 
per perfectly uh, feasible. Uh, but by the way, this is uh, yeah. But, but most, if you look on uh, online backgammon games, so everything is flat, and there's a lot of games, obviously. And this is exactly what I don't want. I want this uh, 3D feeling, and I want it when you click on it. I want to see it up. I want you I want to see the movement. Yeah, but you, or you can only tilt it to one side. This is the difference. You can tilt it up. Okay, okay, okay. You got you got something. You got something. I liked it. I like it. I'll try it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, is there any particular reason to use CSS instead of other technologies? Yeah, it's much more fun. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, so uh, uh, Okay, so uh, here's the reason. Uh, in my day job obviously I don't do these kind of things, but when I come to in when you come to do your day job and you need to uh, center a div, and when you need to create an animation, uh, when you need to, uh, even, even simple interactions sometimes can be, I'm way past that. And uh, the reason I started using, pushing CSS to the limits is just because there, there's a saying in uh, Hebrew, uh, 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 I don't know how to translate it in Hebrew. How in your training, it's easy to fight. Uh, yeah, we're a militant uh, uh, nation. Uh, but this is basically it. I'm, I'm pushing myself to doing impossible things, so the, the possible things would be much easier, much more comfortable. And I'm learning a lot of uh, hacks and tricks and things that I didn't know existed. Uh, like, uh, not, not too far ago, I didn't know that you can actually use transform origin on the z-axis. A lot of people don't know it. Um, and oh yeah, I can do it, and it actually saves me a lot of, a lot of time in, 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 different, uh, in different things. And th that being said, I am working very, very hard on, on inserting uh, perspective into, the day into our day-to-day -day world. I think the future, if you look at, the, if you look at five, 10 years ahead, uh, the VR uh, world is upon us. And as the VR world will be more and more uh, rarely available, uh, uh, commonly available, excuse me. So, uh, li like, like, like cell phones. So we're going to see more and more interactions and uh, and and layouts that are three D based. More and more use of perspective. Uh, and w when we see it, we're going to need to uh, use it. And we're going to need to build it in our websites. And the best way to do it, we, we need to do it in the best way possible. I think one of the best way possible, in some cases, is CSS. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm in the middle of it. Uh, I, I didn't finish it. Um, so, in general, brute force. I'm checking all the possibilities. I'm, yeah. I'm, but because here's the thing. Uh, I'm. There's no, not so many, not a lot of possibilities. If you look at the at the normal turn, a normal play, there's two moves, and there's something like three or four possibilities uh, for each move. So there's not so many options. So I, I've decided to. To, at least for now, to go on uh, brute force. I, I am optimizing it, obviously, because I'm checking if something is, if you have to do a certain move, so I'm, I'm doing this move first, obviously. Uh, so there's a lot of le levels, but if, in the world, brute force. What about uh, stacking pieces on top of each other if you're... Uh yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm, 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 I, so I'll... So here I, I've used a position of up to 15, so the, it's, it, it is layered up. It can be. Okay. Yeah, uh, because no, we're... It's not layered up, it's not stacked, it's it, just on the same level. No, no, I'm, I'm stacking them up. Like, uh, okay. yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm using another, another variable of z-axis, because if you're on the second line, I'm using another z, uh, I'm adding another z level. So, so five or six or seven? Or 12. No, six is the maximum, and then you start stacking up, yeah. Right. Um, any other questions? Yeah. Is this uh, open source or GitHub? Uh, I would be happy to send it to you. It's a code pen. Is it considered open source? Yep. Yep. Ah. Ooh. 
Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, here's the thing. It's actually it's it's a, it's a good comment. Uh, so here, if you open it in the middle, you can see the axis, the the the. And these little details, I, I do like to add them to my animations because they do add uh, this fine touch. Uh, and, and yeah, you're right. I didn't think thought about it. With small screws, yeah. <laughs> um, any? Oh, so like, uh, yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you eat, uh, if you eat a, a piece in a backgammon, so it goes to the top. Uh, so yeah, I can. Uh, uh, so now it's two, and, and here's the thing that, uh, that I have implemented about the. Uh, so here's five. So he ne he has to do those two fives. So we already did it. Okay, even if I press redo, he you have to do those two fives. Okay, so you already do did it. Uh, so this is the, the, I, I did add some automation, but it, I, again, it's not it's not finished. Uh, you can see it's uh, v zero point one. It's zero point one because it is playable all the way to the end, but it's not it's not yet finished. Uh, questions? You asked because you want to. Oh wait, you asked because you want to take it a step forward. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, pure, uh, yeah. And, and yeah, all, all the JavaScript does is just changes classes and set uh, custom properties. <coughs> it, it changes classes and set custom property. It doesn't affect the DOM directly. It doesn't affect a specific uh, element directly. And it doesn't, uh, n not the style and not the element itself. Just classes and custom properties, yeah. That's a good question. Yeah, yeah. OK, so uh, obviously, this level, no problem. Up to hundreds, few hundreds divs that's, that are moving, most computers can get it, no problem. The, the, I think the question is not how much divs is, is what you're moving. If you're using only transforms and opacity, so you are using uh, hardware accelerated animation, so normally you don't have a problem. If you're starting uh, to animate the top left or the width or the height of things, the 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 performance would go down uh, pretty pretty fast. What about? Uh, the what about? Over the phone, like oh no problem. This one's on my phone, clear. Yeah. So if there's any other questions, so thank you. I hope you learned something today. One, 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 one request, one request. If you are doing something with 3D, please uh, send it to me. I'm on Twitter. I think the best place to find me is on Twitter. Uh, Amita Sage, uh, this is me. Uh, find me on Twitter, send it to me. I love to see things that other people do in 3D. Trust me. Uh, yeah, so send it to me. That's very good expose. And, and you get a nice exposure. Uh,